Good evening and welcome to the programme. We start tonight with news that gang crime figures have come down in the capital. The government claims its strategy of combating gang culture is working. The project was launched a year ago following the widespread violence and disorder during the London riots in 2011. But critics say although it's taken some troublemakers off the streets, it doesn't tackle the root causes or solve the long-term problem. Chris Rogers reports. A knock on the door of suspected gang members. This raid in August, one of many across the capital this year. 1,180 gang members are either behind bars or have been issued with gang injunctions, ASBOs and electric tagging. On Tuesday, 400 officers burst into 21 homes in a series of dawn raids across Lambeth, Croydon and Sutton. There were 27 arrests for a range of offences, including conspiracy to supply Class A drugs, robbery and immigration offences. The Met's Operation Trident is on the front line of the government's war on gang criminality. They're used to holding guns, but now you just want hugs. But so is tackling the issue from grassroots level. A Home Office minister visits Mac UK. Hello. The charity tries to reach out to teenagers caught up in crime and violence and change their lives. The government is funding projects like this. My hunch is that this sort of approach on the ground is going to be far more effective in getting them to, to turn around for turn their lives around than the traditional method might have been of just kind of lecturing them. But don't forget your family. The government initiative has focused on 33 areas across England where gang crime is a major problem. 20 are in Greater London. Ministers and the police claim it's working, with figures showing a fall in knife-related crime and attempted murder among 10 to 19-year-olds in the targeted areas. A Home Office report highlights nearly £8 million in government funding has been given to community projects. And they're helping the police crack down with new offences of threatening with a knife in a public place or school, the announcement of tougher sentences for the sale and transfer of illegal guns, and the introduction of gang membership injunctions for under-18s. The report admits the fall in crime cannot be attributed to the government programme. It was launched in the wake of the London riots. Even before scenes like this on our streets, gang-related crime was falling. The issue is uh, just how broad, uh, just how deep are the interventions uh, in these activities. Whilst the falls in crime we've heard about, I think, are welcome, there's an enormous more still to be done. One of the most interesting elements in this Home Office report is the title, Ending Gang and Youth Violence. Really? Can you really end it? This estate in Hackney is one of the hotspots targeted by the government initiative. Sheldon Thomas speaks the same language as gang members. He used to be one. Now he runs a charity helpline that offers advice for a way out. A lack of hope, despair, bad education, bad housing stock, uh, broken families, missing fathers. I mean, I can go on with the list because there's a lot of um, factors that contribute to gangs. And really and truly, are we really talking about gangs or are we talking about actually a broken society? While gang-related crime may be falling, it is a stubborn issue. Gangs have, and probably always will, plague our city. But for now, charities welcome the issue being firmly on the government's agenda. Chris Rogers, BBC London News. Coming up later in the programme.